On this episode of Wellesley One on One, Tom Gomat is the CEO of Shamit Design and Construction, a national construction management firm responsible for some of the most iconic and specialized projects in the country. This year, Tom was also nominated for the Townsman 10 for his work on the Wellesley High School Building Committee and the Facilities Maintenance Committee. Stephen Beach was recently appointed the new Executive Director of the Wellesley Community Center. With a Fortune 500 business background and years of experience on the Wellesley at Home Board of Directors, Steve is tasked with improving the services of the Community Center. Tom and Steve are meeting for the first time. This is Wellesley One on One. Hey Tom, are you a pizza man? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So Tom, I understand that you were Shawmut uh, Construction, is that correct? Yeah, I run Shawmut Design and Construction in Boston, yeah. I'm curious about your um, efforts with uh, Los Angeles and the retail property development. You guys are building some yeah. Louis Vuitton outlets and some other Highline yeah. retailers? Yeah, well we've been working in California for probably 15 years now. So one of our, uh, part of our business is we do very high end and specialty retail around the country. And so people like Louis Vuitton, Apple, Chanel and so forth. And uh, you know, we basically travel with them. So you know, their, their need is they want to be lots of different places, but they don't want to have to get to know a contractor every place. So really our value proposition is um, we take away those worries. Now how did that business model develop? That's pretty clever and yet it's so common sense I wouldn't have thought of it. <laughs> it really goes back to the early 90s and in fact it's kind of ironic that we're sitting in Bertucci's because Bertucci's took us on the road. Really? Back. So when Joey Crugnali started Bertucci's you know, he wanted to expand, and he got very, very close with Jim Ansara, who's the founder of Shawmut, and we were doing all of the Bertucci's, and Joey said, well, I want to go to New Jersey, and I want to go to Virginia, and we are like, okay, we can do that. And that's really how we got our sort of baptism of working on the road, and, um, you know, we saw that this was uh, a nice value proposition, and it was really something that people weren't doing. And so, you know, you're always looking for that place where there's not a lot of competition. Well, and it really became, uh, you know, a real strategy of ours. Having so. having a very good knowledge of residential contracting myself. Okay. I know how tricky this business can be. Never mind um, uh, consumer end. The commercial stuff is a very thin margin yeah. uh, line of work. Right. So it sounds like you've carved out a pretty nifty market for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it keeps it creative and, and interesting as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So there's a big push on these days within the both the public and the private sector for sustainability, green initiatives. How yeah. are you guys getting teed up for that, or what are you currently doing to address well, those? I mean, green has, has gone completely mainstream. So really to the point, for example, you know, here in Wellesley where we've got the stretch energy code, you virtually can be LEED certified by meeting the stretch energy code. So almost everything, you know, as long as you do your construction practices the right way, you can almost get LEED certified for anything that you have to build here in Wellesley. And that's really becoming the norm. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to pay to get certified because of the administrative costs, but they want to build green. And, so we try to do recycling on every job, whether it's a green job or not. And it's just, it's just good environmental practice, I would say. So we've got about 60 LEED certified people in-house. You know, we can do all the LEED paperwork, all the certifications. You know, we know what to do on the construction practices side. We understand the design side. And, um, and, and things are really getting executed that way probably more often than not today. I mean, I, you know, if you're not up to speed on green today, you're really behind the curve, I would say. I know a lot of the green initiatives that are done are invisible to the, to the public. Yeah. 
and a lot of times people say, well, what's going on with potable water management? What's going on with active or passive solar applications? What's going on with geothermal? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you guys able to, to get brownie po points within those various uh, applications? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, and we can also do cost-benefit analysis because those particular things that you talk about are actually the ones that have the greatest cost and the longest payback. You know, they're they're sort of the the sexy green items, right? No, no Photovoltaics question. and and uh, you know geothermal. It's uh, you know you you really lay out that cost benefit, and it's a long, long payback. Right. So you know it's really the efficiencies of your insulations and you know the the efficiencies of your sort of run of the mill systems that you're putting in that really, uh, you know, rainwater management, you know, runoff, and, and then it's interesting things, you know, you get green for having bicycle racks, right? And True. Because <laughs> you're, and if you have a bicycle program, you know, you get green points for that. So there are things that you can do to get green points that really don't cost a lot of money. Right. You know, those things, it's, it's the things that people talk about, they cost the most money and they have the longest paybacks, unfortunately, at this point. So. Well, I think it's good that, that the public are educated to things like runoff water management oh, because yeah. it is not a capital intensive thing, right. and, but right. it yields significant benefits. Right. All right. of a sudden now your landscaping is being handled. That's right. That's You're re right. reducing your uh, usage charges. Right. Uh, You're just designing landscaping that, you know, is more wildflowers than lawn. So, you know, part of the green is you're not, you don't have the maintenance costs that you have if you're trying to maintain this pristine lawn. So you see that around schools and things today, obviously not in the field areas and so forth, but, you know, your traffic islands and so forth in parking lots, you know, that's not grass anymore. That's something that is more sustainable and doesn't need day-to-day -day maintenance. Right. You know, which is which is another aspect of green. You're not burning like gas my in the lawnmower. Crab grass. <laughs> That's right. So what are you doing now? Well, I I am the uh, what is referred to as the new guy at the Wellesley Community Center. Okay. And I am charged with the uh, task of shaking it up over at the community center. It's a rather nice facility. It's a it rather nice piece of property. Yeah. It's a what I call a real dummy-proof location. If you can't figure out how to get there, right. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So we are trying to reach out to the um, school system in a more effective manner. We are trying to engage the business community in a more effective manner. Mm -hmm. We are looking to uh, open up some events now to the town that have never been offered in the past. So. We are trying to reintroduce this as an asset to the town and explain what its mission is, how it's run, who runs it, what its charter is, and how it can be made available to all members, kids, middle-aged folks, uh, and seniors as well. And boy, do I have my work cut out for me. Yeah, you do. You absolutely do. Uh, so I was going to ask you, it's probably a little controversial, but so how does this play into the senior center situation? Is there, a, is there a goal you've got there? We love the COA. They're very creative. They craft a super agenda. I think it's a very professionally run uh, organization. We want to see them get what they want. I'm really the ops guy, so I don't get involved with policy decisions. Uh, it would be wonderful if they can secure uh, a facility, whether it may be a St. James project, maybe it's the uh, VFW property. We'll have to wait and see, but I know there are a lot of folks who are rooting for them and, and want to advance their agenda and, and provide a higher level of service to our seniors. Okay, so do you think they can do that more effectively with a standalone center than working as part of your center? I mean, Acad that's certainly what Academically we speaking, how could you not do a better yeah, job? Yeah, that's true. That's you've true. got your own parking, you've got your own yeah. offices, you've got everything is dialed in just the way you want it. Yeah. So yeah. I can clearly appreciate their, their excitement and, and, and their desire to try right. to make this happen. Yeah. In the meantime, I do my best to take care of them and make sure that all the bookings are coordinated and they, they get the support and the space and the resources that I can afford their organization.
Okay. Now this is a full-time gig at the community it, center. Boy, is it ever. Boy, uh, the boy, other full-time week I realized that I was at my desk seven days in a row. Yeah. So it, yeah. it gives you some idea of the, the, shall we say, the opportunities that are, that are ahead for the right. community center. Right. But I'm excited. It, it's good to be uh, challenged, and it's good to know that if you simply uh, employ common sense and you collaborate with people and you ask for help, only good things can come of it. In the short time I've been there, we've made tremendous progress. Do you think the community center had or has an image problem? I mean, is that kind of what they brought you in to help address? I think that the average person in town doesn't really know what its function is or its I would charter or yeah. how it came about in the first I've, place. I've probably been in the community center four times and, you know, I think two were Little League drafts, right? And and another one might have been a Little League award program or something like Mine that. Mine was very similar. I yeah. said, it's a place I go to for Cub Scouts. Right, right. And, yeah. and my line of questioning ended right there. Right, yeah. And yes, we do have sports banquets there. Yes, that's right. And uh, that's, <laughs> the, that's the typical image that many of us here in Wellesley have of the Wellesley community center. Yeah. Is it underutilized? It is in the process of being more streamlined. Okay. I'm trying to get better command of the assets that we currently have. Okay. We've got a tremendous amount of square footage. We have a lot of um, features that are not being promoted properly. And one of, my, one of my challenges to myself is to make sure that I book out as many fun and interesting events as I can within a given week. We're, and we're making progress. Yeah. Um, we are blessed to have the COA as our tenants, but frankly, I think the COA has done kind of a better job taking advantage of the space than the Wellesley Community Center. I may get quoted out of context on that, <laughs> but that's kind of um, my takeaway at this point in time. Yeah. What's the mission of the community center? It is to provide uh, free or heavily subsidized space and accommodations for civic applications, for school kids, for residents in general. Let's say, for example, you had a, uh, a nonprofit, a fraternal organization of um, construction managers. Okay. Yes. You would call me up and say, Stephen, I'm interested in hosting a, a, a function. I will work something out given enough warning where you can bring in caterers, I can set you up with a nice space, I can provide you with copious amounts of parking. Okay. We already talked about the egress aspect, how any dummy can find their way to the Wellesley right, Community Center. Right, yeah. And we have not done, in my estimation, a good job uh, locally of, of telling people they can do that. Yeah, yeah. So I, okay, that, I did not know that, right. I would have assumed that it was really just, uh, you know, like Wellesley Little League or, or something like that. But that's interesting. So really, if you're involved in a nonprofit, so it's really, it's not like, oh, I'd like to have a shaman meeting at the community center. Well, that's not really what we do, but for a nonprofit, I'd be happy you know. to take your money. <laughs> okay. We actually, along that vein, we actually do welcome um, corporate uh, venues. For example, we recently hosted a Starbucks function. Okay. We recently hosted a Whole Foods event as well. Okay. And we're delighted because that helps us maintain our operating budget, and it allows us the privilege to provide all the other free and subsidized events that we currently right, uh, right. make available. That's great. So I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I assume your rental rates are probably quite attractive compared to... They, they, uh, are, they are attractive by simplicity. design. Yeah, yeah. See, I'd rather have more bookings than to try to monkey around with my rate schedule. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. And it's got a full kitchen and so forth, so you a can... A full commercial caterers kitchen. Caterers can come in and, yes. and do... Uh, you can bang out just about anything you can imagine in that kitchen. That's great. And when people come, I say, please visit. I need you to see the place. Don't rely on the website to figure out what we're good at and what we're not. Yeah. 
and they come in and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had this. Even though it's all over the website, it's a lot different in person. So are you a longtime Wellesley resident? By Wellesley standards, no. Well, I, I would, not 400 years or something, right. Right. Yeah. New England, yes, but Wellesley since 1997. Okay, all right. That's a pretty long time. I've been here since 89. Well, so. that makes you an almost long timer. Well, I don't, I don't know. quite make the cut myself. <laughs> I don't know. I think you got to be about four generations, I think, before you really... Uh... My wife's family moved here from uh, D.C. in 1969, and even they're considered newcomers yeah, by they're some still, people's Yeah, standards. they're still newbies. Yeah, well, in New England, yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs>